Hello and welcome to episode 4 of the Automation Podcast brought to you by InsightsInAutomation.com. I'm your host, Sean Tierney, and on today's show, we'll be discussing the new Micro 820 as seen at Automation Fair 2013. As you can imagine, there was a lot of new stuff at Automation Fair 2013, but when I was in the micro area, I noticed this new micro, the 820, and I talked to one of the product managers to get the scoop on what this product is all about. Well, the first thing you need to know about the Micro 820 is that it has an Ethernet port, so that's good. And it also has the capabilities of serial, but via a terminal block, not a mini DIN connector or 9-pin D-shell. So that's interesting. Um, The Micro 820 also has a built-in real-time clock and accepts a SD card, a micro SD card for program backup and restore. Also as a place where you can store some data logging. Now, because it takes that micro SD card for program backup and restore, it does not accept the double EEPROM card or memory storage card that the 830 and 850 use. So that's a little different. However, it's convenient to be able to data log to a micro SD card because that's a very popular off the shelf item. Now, the 820 is also different from the micro 830 and 850 as it does not have a built in USB port. And also, unlike the Micro 830 and Micro 850, it does not support micro motion control. So the product manager said something like, if it has an even part number, it doesn't do motion control. If it has an odd part number, like 830, 850, then it will have motion control. And then that kind of gets messed up because the 810 is odd, but whatever. In any case, while the... uh, 820 doesn't have motion control, it does have the ability to do low speed PTOs. So if you wanted to do a pulse train output for whatever reason, maybe you're doing a a controlling temperature or a PID for proportional timed outputs, then um, you could do that with the PTO out. But you're not going to have that high speed PWM output that you would have available with the 830 and 850. Now also releasing alongside the 820 is a new four line text display and They were adamant to describe it as a four-line text display and not an HMI. The way you display things on this unit is by ASCII commands via the serial connection. Now, it does do a couple cool things. It does have a fall color backlight, so if you had an alarm, you could change the backlight to red. And it also does have some uh, function keys and and arrow keys on the front. However, you're going to be writing ASCII to read and write to this thing, so I don't know how user-friendly it's actually going to be. The nice thing about this, though, is that that it does have a USB port on the front, so you can actually use that USB port on the front of that four-line text display to program your Micro 820. However, when you're using the USB port to program the 820, the text display stops working. Now, coming out to support the Micro 820 is also Connected Components Workbench 6.0, which would be boring if that's the only reason we were getting 6.0, but it's not. There are actually two other features in 6.0 that I think people will really like. The first one is they're finally giving us the ability to change the processor type of our program. So previously, if you had a Micro 830 and you wanted to put that program in a Micro 850, you'd pretty much have to copy and paste your entire program. Now with Connected Components 6.0, we're being told that you can actually change the processor type of your program. So you don't have to do any more of that copy and pasting between programs. The second feature they think most people will like is now they are embedding the ability to upload and download to the panel view component. So in the past, we used to have to export the panel view component project from CCW to a file, and then we would use the built-in web page on the panel view component to transfer the file from our computer to the panel view itself. What they're saying now with Connected Components Workbench 6.0, we will have the ability to do a download or an upload from right in the software much more user-friendly and similar to all the other products Rockwell makes. Well, that's it. That's all the information I have today about the Micro 820. It looked really cool. If you want to see pictures of it, head over to theautomationblog.com and search on Micro 820. You'll find my blog post there. And if you want to ask a question or leave a comment, please head over to theautomationpodcast.com and comment on this podcast post there. That's all I have for today. You can always stay on top of all the Insights websites by visiting insightsandautomation.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. I'm known as Mr. Sean Tierney on all three services. Well, that's it for episode four of the Automation Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Tierney. And until next time, peace.